Hey, I'm Rob from jtopodcast.com and I'm going to show you how to play Comanauts. This is a game for two to four players, plays in about 120 minutes, is designed by Jerry Hawthorne and is published by Plaid Hat Games. You're a Comanaut sent into the tormented mind of coma patient Dr. Strobel. Explore the different zones and confront his inner demons, aka IDs, holding him hostage. Defeat the randomly chosen Prime ID to free the Doctor and win the game. Now, setup can be a bit fiddly, so I'm going to break it up into three areas. The game area, the player area, and the page. First, put all the dice in the dice bag. Shuffle the vital sign card called Flatline along with two stable cards and place them face down. Shuffle the rest of the vital sign cards and put them on top to create the vital signs deck. Put it to one side for now. Remove any two cards called Fear from the red-backed ID Entity deck. If continuing the campaign, also remove cards with stickers on them as you won't use them in future campaign games. Now the game itself can be played with or without a campaign at any time and there's some instructions for you to follow in the game which I'll explain towards the end of this video. Shuffle the red-backed numbered ID Entity deck and draw five and look at them. Return the rest to the box. Collect the matching purple Comazone cards. The number of the Comazone card for each Entity ID is shown in the circle at the bottom of the card and will match the number in the middle of the Comazone card. Lay the rest of the Comazone cards next to the open game book. This is called the Nexus. Return the rest of the Comazone cards to the box. Find the yellow back token cards matching the Comazone cards in the Nexus and put them into a stack. The related Comazone and the totem can be found under the totem's title. Choose a random Comazone card as the Comazone you will start the game in. Set aside the ID entity for that Comazone. For example, if you choose Plainsville number 1 as your starting Comazone, set aside the ID entity number 1 called Fear. Choose one random ID entity from the rest without looking at it and place it face down. This is the prime ID. Shuffle the five blue backed clue cards with the matching number and place them on top of the prime ID card. Put the other ID entities into a separate stack, including the chosen starting card. Put the sideboard next to the game book and add the safe marker to the slot underneath. Put the rest of the cards and tokens out on the table. And now on to player setup. Give each player a player sheet and give them the matching default status as printed on that player sheet and place it face down on the sheet. For example, if the board says fearful, put the fearful card face down. While looking at status cards, if a player ever gains a status card, it is placed next to the player board. For example, if the book tells you a player has become trapped, give them the trapped card. If a player is asked to activate their default status, the face down status card is flipped face up. These cards give you an effect and also show rules on how they can be removed. Back to player setup, shuffle the avatar deck, add two to each player board face down without looking at them. Each player then chooses one of the remaining cards and places it face up on that space. Add three health tokens to the card plus any starting bonus, for example Ling starts with two extra health. The other bonus available on character cards gives a bonus of each of that coloured die that character rolls. More on dice rolling later. Collect the starting avatar standee and starting items. For example, Carl Gantry starts with a flashlight and a fedora. It's worth noting at this point that characters have five slots. Head, body, two hands and a spot for an accessory. An accessory can also be held in one of the hands. There are also two inventory slots for unequipped items on the other side of the player board. And if your starting coma zone is listed as suspicious on the player card, add a suspicious token to the player card. For example, Cecilia is suspicious in coma zone number 10. This can affect how that character is treated in that coma zone. Choose a random start player and give them the bookmark. Before starting, read the intro text on page 3 of the adventure book if you wish, then turn to the page shown in the text box of the starting coma zone card. Read the intro section of the starting coma zone and follow any page setup instructions. Do not read any additional numbered sections just yet. Now page setup differs from page to page as will be described in that opening paragraph, but there are some basics you can follow across every page. I'll go through those now. If the setup section refers to an environment card, place it in view of all players. This card will show you additional rules for the current page of the adventure book. Avatars go in the avatar starting space, the one with a down arrow. Search spots with the magnifying glass can be searched. Tokens are added when the page setup says to do so. Insight spots, marked with a key, will also gain a matching token when the book says so. The gear logo represents objectives. Again, these will gain a matching token when instructed. And now onto gameplay, players take turns over the following seven steps around the table. Those steps can be found on the handy little cheat cards. Step one, draw five dice from the dice bag. Refill the bag with any dice in the discard pool if required and continue drawing. There's no need to roll the drawn dice just yet. Step two, gain clarity. Roll one or more white dice. If the total is equal to or higher than the number of clarity tokens the player has, they gain one clarity token. 
And for each clarity roll, you decide how many dice you use. So if you've got two white dice, you can either have two rolls using one dice each, or one roll combining the total of the two dice. Clarity can be spent to perform the action on the character card. For example, Link can automatically pass any skill test. You can also spend one token to re-roll a rolled dice as many times as you have tokens available to do so. Step 3. Place Threat. Place black dice with white pips on the threat track. Also place black dice with red pips, but only if your character is suspicious, otherwise these go back in the bag. At this point, if there are more dice on the threat track than enemies in play and the situation is hostile, return a previously defeated enemy to the board. Now this is only enemies defeated in combat, not removed from the board by any other means, but we'll look at starting an encounter, enemies and combat a bit later on. Step 4. Place Inner Child. If the translucent die is drawn this turn, roll it and add it to the inner child space on the board. Reveal the top vital sign card. If a yellow critical card is drawn, follow the instructions on the current page of the book. Green stable cards have no effect. If you draw the red flatline card, the game is over and you lose, but remember this was shuffled into the bottom three cards of the deck. Then add the inner child standee to its space if there is one on the current page. It's the space mark with a rabbit hole. Step 5 is for the players to perform actions. You can roll one or more matching coloured dice, resolve the effect and discard them. Players can take any number of actions as long as they have the available coloured dice to do so. Purple dice are a wild card and they can be used on their own or combined with others when performing actions. For example, if you need to roll red dice, you can roll your red dice and any number of purple dice and combine their total. However, these dice are still purple and don't qualify for any colour bonuses unless stated. Now there are 10 actions you can take, let's look at them now. Focus. Trade any two of your dice for one die from the discard pile. Move. Spend any die to cross a dotted line or to move your avatar to a different position within the same space. Coloured lines can only be crossed when using the matching coloured die or a purple die to move. For example, a green die, representing agility, needs to be spent to cross a green line. Now, dotted lines will count as a green line if you're moving out of the same space as an enemy, so a green die will need to be used. Solid white lines block movement and cannot be crossed at all. If a player ends their movement on a point of interest with an eyeball symbol, an insight spot with a key token, or an objective spot with a cog token, read the appropriate passage in the adventure book. Points of interest can only be activated once unless the reuse symbol is next to the icon in the adventure book. Just a note on insight, when gaining a key token, add it to the insight track. When three are collected, discard them and gain a clue card from the top of the deck. Clue cards give you a clue as to the identity of the prime ID and allow you to take a totem from the totem deck. A totem card can be used to go to a certain page in the adventure book. The clue on the clue card will hopefully steer you to the totem that will allow you to travel to the Cobra Zone containing the Prime ID, putting you a step closer to defeating it and winning the game. Back to the actions and reserve. Put a die on your player sheet if you have room. There is room for just one die and a previous store die must be spent before a new die can be stored. This die can be used on future turns. Encourage allows you to place a die on another player sheet, replacing the die if they already had one stored there. Or you can discard a die yourself to give a player one of your focus tokens. Equip trade. Discard a die. Freely arrange your equipment. You are able to trade items with one player in the same space as you. Skill test. Sometimes you'll be asked to take a skill test, roll any number of the correct coloured dice, and then check the result. The book will tell you what you do on a success or a failure. If you're forced to take a test by the book and you don't have the correct dice available, you fail automatically. Group task. Roll and add the correct coloured dice or purple dice to the group task from anywhere on the map unless stated. You can never fail a group task. When the total of the dice on the track meets or exceeds the target, the group task has passed. If all the spaces on the group task track are taken and you haven't met the target, they will remain unsuccessful. This is as close as you can get to failing a group task. Search. Spend and roll a yellow dice when in a space with a search token. On a four or more, discard the token, gain one of the available items listed in the adventure book from the deck and equip it for free, or give it to a player in the same space. Nearly there, and the final two actions are for combat, and remember you can attack an enemy in the same space as you, or you can attack a ranged enemy in one space away from you without having a weapon equipped. It's just basically you finding whatever you find lying around to attack. Melee attack. When in the same space as the target, roll red dice to meet or exceed the target number including weapon bonuses to deal damage to the target. For example, this bandit needs an 8 in total to be defeated and the sword gives a plus 1 bonus. Now usually enemies are defeated in one hit, just put their card and stand the aside for now, they could come back as I explained earlier. Also gain the item listed on the loot section and equip it for free or give it to a player in the same space. Ranged attack. If the space is within the range listed, which by default is 1 plus the modifier on the weapon, for example the pistol adds 1 extra space, roll green dice in the same way as melee combat. 
Line of sight is base to base, so you may need to take an action to move your character within the same space just to gain line of sight. Thick white lines will block line of sight. Well, that was a long step five. Now, step six is quite simply to discard any dice you didn't use this turn, and step seven is check a threat. If the situation is hostile and the dice on the dice track equals or exceeds the number of enemies in play, the enemies take a turn. More on that shortly. If the situation is safe but there are four or more dice on the threat track, follow these four steps in order. 1. Resolve the lightning bolt icon on the current page that matches the symbol under the fourth threat spot. 2. If enemies come into play, flip the tile to hostile. 3. Discard all dice from the threat track. 4. Return the discard pile to the dice bag. Now let's assume things have become hostile and look at generating an encounter. If it isn't already, flip the situation token to hostile. Get the hostile and or ID entity cards and matchy standees listed in the book. Place on their various spaces, marked with a skull and bones, as evenly as possible. Shuffle the cards, lay them face up in their spaces to the right of the sideboard. If encountering an ID entity, search for that card. If it can't be found in the stack of ID entity cards, then you encounter the Prime ID, which you placed under the clue cards earlier. If it is the Prime ID, add one health token per player to the card. It is attacked as normal, but if it would be defeated, instead remove a token. If all enemies have been defeated, return the situation to safe. At the end of a player's turn, if the situation is safe with fewer than four dice on the threat track, or you have just taken an enemy turn, play continues clockwise. But if at the end of a player's turn there are equal to or more dice on the threat track than enemies in play, the enemies take a turn which is performed over two steps. 1. Enemy activation. Activate each enemy from top to bottom on the threat track. Roll a die from the threat track then match the number rolled to the enemy's action. For example, on a 1-4 to four, this enemy uses their hefty axe ability, on a 5 or 6 they use throw hatchet. Let's look at those symbols starting with arrow which is move. Up to a number space is shown towards the closest avatar. Stop if in the space with the avatar. They can move through coloured lines. Target. Target the closest avatar within range shown. Explosion. Attack target. Remove one life from the target. The target can defend by rolling their stored die and will block the attack if they roll equal to or higher than the attack strength. If successful, the die is returned to the player sheet and the player will not lose a life. However, if they're unsuccessful, not only will they lose a life, the die is also discarded. Step 2. After all enemies have activated, discard the threat dice, return all discarded dice to the bag and continue with the next player's turn. Should a player's avatar lose its last health, it is sent to the morass and these six steps are followed. 1. Reveal the vital sign card and resolve it as previously described. 2. Remove the avatar standee from play. 3. Discard the avatar card, remove any unused dice, their starting items, status effects and suspicious token. 4. Reveal the next avatar card on the player board and add the standee to the morass. 5. Add 3 health and any bonuses to the avatar. 6. Give any starting items to the avatar just like player setup, except they start equipped and any replaced currently equipped story items are moved to their inventory. At the start of their next turn, if in the morass, return to a space with another avatar and add a suspicious token based on the current coma zone if required. Now let's look at the steps you need to take when turning a page. If you need to turn a page, finish the current player's turn, including the check threat step. Move standees to their player's cards, including those in the morass, and remove tokens and enemies from the page. Return all dice to the dice bag, including those on the threat track, but not those stored on player's cards. Now turn to the correct page and set up as normal. Some effects send the players to the Nexus, the row of Comazone cards. If sent to the Nexus, players return their standees to their player card and then decide which Comazone they will visit next. Remember you're looking for the Prime ID, so it won't be the starting Comazone and it won't be any Comazone whose ID you have defeated previously. You can use the info on the collected clue cards to help you narrow it down, but whichever you select, go to that page in the book and set up as normal. We mentioned that if the flatline card is revealed the players lose, but also if a player's third avatar is defeated the players lose, and if all players avatars are in the morass at the same time, the players lose. But if you uncover and remove the last health token from the Prime ID, you win. There will also be instructions on how to use the campaign stickers and how to progress the campaign when you defeat the Prime ID. And that's Covenauts, a cooperative storybook adventure game. Please like this video if you found it useful, share it to let others know about it and subscribe to the channel for more how to play videos as well as other board game related content. You can find me on Twitter and Insta at JTR Podcast or find my blog at jtrpodcast.com. I'll be Rob aka Jester the Rogue and until next time, look after your own mental health.